previously on E3 2018 Roundup. Well, anyways, that's going to be it for now. Um, in like a week or so, I'll have the Ubisoft Sony video out. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't happen. At the rate I've been uploading these videos, I'll have E3 2019 done in 2021, and E3 2020 done never. Because it's been 400 centuries since I've done one of these, I thought it'd be fun if I made a little retrospective for some of the games we previously covered since most of them came out since then. <laughs> Stupid motherfuckers. So who do we have up next? Ubisoft, huh? I got some sick intel for y'all. I don't care at all about Ubisoft. 90% of their games are boring, and the other 10% they don't make. Now that we have the ended benefit of hindsight on our side, we can reflect on these games and say, I was excited for The Division 2. Okay, I can't be too hard on Ubisoft. They can make good games that I'd be excited for. So, let's see that new Rayman. Yeah, damn it. The game they showed off was Just Dance and the, the whole Just Dance at E3 thing with a big song and dance which makes sense considering the game it's for, but they always spend so long and it. it's like five minutes and there's never not a Just Dance game every year. Like the market for these games is basically non-existent now nowadays. I doubt anyone's out there that's like, oh boy, Just Dance 2018's coming out. It'd be 2019 because it's the year 2020 and they said it, we're Madden now. And it's on the Wii! Aw, oh, yeah! Well, this is shown at E3. After that was a trailer for Beyond Good and Evil 2, which I do remember people being really excited for back when it was first revealed, but I've probably totally forgotten about existence now. Though that's no small part to most people having never played the first game, the fact that it was announced in 2017, we still know barely anything about the game three years later, and it's the fact it's still not even out yet. They showed some random pre-rendered trailer that seemed to contradict the previous pre-render trailer since Pig Dude's on the good guy team now and then they showed the lady from the first game uh, and then some fucking guy comes on and is like hey yo yes you can put your art in eat in freaking the, the game oh boy Ubisoft E3s really are something aren't they next dude talked about Rainbow Six Siege some random info like oh there's 35 million players now which like why did you come to E3 to say this I mean, they had the new operators, and they talked about a tournament they're hosting, but still, it was five minutes on a game that came out three years ago at the time. This, ha this game's half a decade old now. Are you seeing a pattern yet? Ubisoft games are kind of hard to talk about, since they're one of the developers of Mr. Memos that people mostly just care about games and announcements, and stretch out the info for like five times the length that it really should be. Next was Trials Fusion, and they had some random fucking dude do the most obvious fake ass weak shit practical on a dinky setup of one TV and like a fucking desk that's probably made out of drywall on the Eric Andre show cause that thing fucking falls in the pits apart into a billion pieces after just some slightly chubby dude falls on it. Game itself, yeah, it's another Trials game, this lighthearted fun. Wait, I spoke too soon, we can get the closed bait on TriallsGame.com, let's go there! Like, oh shit, you actually still get a demo, I'll be honest. Didn't think the demands was still up. You want this one, Trails Rising? A strain of the smallpox virus was released on dollar bills in New York City. The infection and chaos spread across the nation. Seven months later, the virus has mostly burnt itself out, but America is tearing itself apart. <laughs> Uh, good thing that thing would never happen in real life. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh. Yeah, it's Division 2 itself. Eh. No one remembers it now, that's all I'm saying. The one thing I do, the one thing I'll keep in mind about Division 2 is the Ubisoft saying, it's like, no, 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 guys, this game is political. People won't buy the game, it's political. And people, they yeah, have some real fucking bullshit considering the, you know, the premise of the game. But the villains don't really have, like, an identity or, like, a real-life parallel. So I guess they have, they kind of do have the ability, so detached from actual reality that it might as well be set in fucking Planet Utopia, Google on 5. 
Yeah, that's a lot of garbage. It's another li live service game, so it's really not worth anything talking about. And then, side note, this game got two trailers and ten minutes of coverage at E3. Wow, isn't this game so interesting? And next up was a trailer for the Donkey Kong expansion for Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which was nice because they had a whole orchestra from it. Hey, you're never, you're never Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Everyone was so invested back in you know 2017. They're like, oh yeah, Ubisoft on the Switch, because the whole the whole Wii U era of like, here's a video game from two years ago on the Wii U. Have fun. And then as soon as everyone beat it, this kind of like. Bye. Anyways, Skull and Bones was next. So the game was kind of surprised it's coming out in 2021. This is what Wikipedia or the internet told me. I just looked it up on Google. They didn't announce this game in 2017. It was a 2020 fog of memory erasure, skewing my memories of the Sea of Thieves clone. I'm assuming the only reason they made this game at all is because the Pirate Assassin's Creed, the last one that went down, right? So it's like. Fuck it, if people want Pirate Assassin's Creed, we'll just make it again. Yeah, after that, Bill Forrest came out to talk about its VR game where you jump through people's minds or whatever. You think it really doesn't tell you anything about the game, or at least the Ubisoft press conferences don't. Thanks to Starlink, and I think the main reason anyone bought this game is because they could put Star Fox in it, and there hasn't been a good Star Fox game in like 40 years. I'm kind of at a loss for other reasons, because it's like totally the life game in fucking 2018. Even Activision gave up two years before you. One year before you. I forgot it came out on Switch. I mean, they got Miyamoto again, so... That's nice. Uh, For Honor was after, and they showed a new expansion for the game. Not much to say about that. Pretty sure most people forgot about this game, which seems to be a running theme here. Uh, Crew 2 was after that, which... Which was a series I hadn't really heard about before. It's kind of like Forza but more types of vehicles and no collisions, so you can't just fucking plow through a Segway through three buildings, cross or like crunch five pedestrians, and tear up an entire farmer's livelihood. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of just not that fun with the rest of it, because it's just st stupid fucking controls and challenges and random pointless collectibles, a Ubisoft classic. I can use real life skating. <laughs> like, I've used real life steering wheels on Forza, and it still feels like ice skating as a moose. And the last thing they showed was Super Assassin's Odyssey, Super Assassin Odyssey, or the sequel to, or the sequel to Ezio Orange's, aka Grindfest, the game. They made a big deal about even about playing a female character this time, even though they were able to do that back in Unity, largely because they didn't mention it the first time around. I forgot, because Unity was like, after, like five years ago. If yeah, Ubisoft must have too, haha. Most of the remaining time in the E3, because it's like 20 minutes left, was dedicated to actual fucking gameplay. But like, it's Assassin's Creed. You know what you're getting in for. This was a seek. This was like uh, Assassin's Creed Origins plus one. Why did you show gameplay off again? All you did was remove a mini map. So yeah, that was Ubisoft showing, and you know. Overall, kind of boring and overly long, which is incredibly fitting description for most of the games. So I guess, you know, stick to what you know. So next was the Sony show. I know there was some other shows in between, but uh, I only cover ones that matter, like Square Enix. Hey, if I wanted to watch a million RPG and Marvel game trailers, i just watch a 2019 Nintendo Direct. The PC game show? Most of the games that could be announced there either aren't working there, worth making huge fuss about, or sequels to game series no average E3 viewers would care about, like Baldur's Gate 3. You don't care about Baldur's Gate 3? Nerds! I don't think I'm a nerd! <laughs> so anyways, Sony, this is the last E3 that they've currently done, as they're too busy not making games we haven't heard about to have an E3 show in 2019. The PS5 event was pretty good though. It was it had a lot of game announcements within it that I can't wait to hear about next year. Yeah. And a uh, spoiler alert, not covering the whole summer game jan and Xbox and PlayStation 5 events. You might question that because you know, they're like three months ago. But you're also watching a video about E3 2018 and 2020. I wouldn't exactly throw stones. It wouldn't throw stones in the glass house if it were. 
Alright, so the event starts out in church where they show Ray William Johnson's all time uh, classic video doing your mom. Okay, they don't actually, but I think it would be pretty cool if they did. They actually show The Last of Us 2, and boy howdy, let me tell you, this game got controversial real fast. I'm just gonna go gloss over The Last of Us 2 thing. I actually had original plan of bringing a guest to bitch about this game for me. Uh, that guy sucked, and he delayed this video. So, if you see him, tell him that he's a loser nerd, and even he <laughs> But yeah, I'm just... Well, like, I'm here to bitch and complain about video games and E3 presentations, not bitch and complain about the internet and people being stupid. Besides, I didn't even play the first Last of Us, so I'd be a little out of my league about talking about it. However, let me tell you, there is plenty of people on the internet that would love to tell you about their opinions of that game. So, go listen to them rather than me adding a fucking flaming car accident, and that was that game. The single thing I will say about it is the whole revenge is bad moral is probably the worst moral to frame a story around. It's probably just kind of a terrible moral in general. We get a yeah, perpetual cycle of violence or whatever. Yeah, no fucking duh, dumbass. So the whole gimmick they had for this E3 because Sony looked at the PlayStation 4 controller and the stupid fucking touch box and said, yeah, we could do dumber, was that each game they had they're showing off had their own special stage that represented the game because they only had like four games they had to show because apparently 2016 had every game announcement that they were going to make for the next three years. Great planning, guys. What ended up happening was that it took 15 minutes to move people to the next stage and they had to fill time with season reel of games they already showed off like a week ago. So they just gave up on the whole idea and put their, everyone in the hut for the rest of the presentation. Next was Ghost of Tsushima and Sony thought it was really important to have this random dude give a sick flute solo for 4 minutes. And to be honest, it kinda is. I mean, I didn't mention it, but there's a dude playing guitar for the last of us. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima shelf. Eh. I remember the game picking interest when it was announced here. I think two years ago what went by and they had no info about it and then Sekiro was announced and they're just like, okay, we don't care anymore. Even though technically Sekiro was announced before this game, don't care. How dare you think I can do research? I originally had a joke about here about how you can show off Spider-Man again. And then I found out it came out this year. And it was also in this ether. Awkward. I thought it was a brief interview of Banana playing guitar and what looks like via like a VR kind of thing, and damn, there's really a lot of music here. It was apparently a dream segment. And then next, there was the actual goddamn trailers for shit, like Control and the Resident Evil 2 remix. Yeah, great idea, guys. Start your E3 show halfway through. After those, there was a trailer for the epic, funny, chungus, Rick and Morty man game, and Kingdom Hearts 3 for the third time this E3. Stop! Who cares as much about the third real Kingdom Hearts game that they want to see it three times at the same show? They certainly wouldn't care when the actual game comes out and anyone who spend that spend a ton of time trying to figure out this nonsense convoluted storyline across 14 spin-offs and remakes effectively got shot on the most game took most of the pre story pre-existing story and threw it out a stained glass window, god Damn it, Green. I would say that's the most angry someone got over that game. But it's the internet, and there's always someone who outdo you. But I'll take the consolation prize of being the person most mad about it about its announcement E3 two years after it came out. And doesn't even t care about the series award, because I think I got that one in the bag. But after all that nonsense, the announcement everyone was waiting for. The standing all year, baby! <laughs> Uh, what a great game. Alright, let's watch the trailer. That's it? That's the last episode? That was just a bunch of cheap walk cycles! What a rip! <laughs> Anyways, we're actually back in the trailer groove again, and they showed off Neo 2 and Spider-Man, but this is like the third time they showed off Insomniac Spider-Man, so I don't care no more. Well, that was Sony's e final E3 for now, it wasn't exactly ending with a bang. I'm mean, sure there's some shul- shul. What am I from Virgin? <laughs> Earth creatures! <laughs> Well, that was Sony's final E3 for now.
I wasn't exactly ending with a bang. Sure, there was some cool showcases of stuff, but there was also plenty of games we already knew about and some technical issues that uh, ended up holding back the presentation. Although I'm sure they're getting the whole PS5 mode at this point, so I guess in the end it was worth it. Ah, here we go. Nintendo. Now see, this is the long part of the video. See, the other companies, I could give less of a fuck. But Nintendo, you gotta understand, we was the first console I I played it was like 10 years old. That means they are entitled to my opinions. And whenever they fuck up, I take it personally. The point I'm getting at with all this nonsense, with all this shit I'm spewing, it's gonna get rambling. So they started out with Damon X Machina, or the most nothing game ever made. This was its official reveal, and you know what we got between then and this game's release? Probably not, since 90% of the people who heard about this game erased it from their memory afterwards, but one demo. One demo for a game that came right the fuck up out of nowhere, seemed incredible, gave no explanation of, it was never brought up again. And that was probably the most extensive coverage this game got on the internet, especially since the devs kept taking down Let's Plays of it. Alright, next our old buddy old pal Reggie came on to talk about the Pokemon Let's Go games for a bit, and I was just gonna gloss over them, because I'm gonna be honest, Pokemon's kinda boring, and we've, heard, and we've heard about these games before. Like, Pokemon has their own directs. But I do understand that they're controversial, because this game changed up most of the Pokemon formula and leaned it towards Pokemon Go, but like, if you really wanted to play Kanto again, there's like, four other games you could do with it. Super Mario Party came out afterwards, and wow, what a mediocre Mario Party game. After tons of fan outcry over how, well, fucking terrible the last few Mario Parties were, Nintendo says, fine, here's the mad video game. I mean, it's, it's better than the car ones, but it doesn't go with the original formula that worked, like, perfectly for nine games, instead I went with the... <clears throat> It instead went with a weird hybrid of that, with the grid-based style of Star Rush, and like, okay, but the maps are all boring as hell, and they're mostly just big squares with no path variation. Plus, the new Super Mario Bros. 2 must have fucking wrecked the Mushroom Kingdom economy or something, because coins are all over this game, because considering everyone gets coins from minigames now, regardless of position, plus everything like stars and items, as well as the board being smaller. So, <coughs> Allies and special blocks let you move around the board quickly. It means that you can hit board events and booze faster. Board events and booze faster than any previous entry. It basically, means coins are fucking worthless in this game. Also, this is the first Mario Party game with online or multiplayer on online multiplayer. And instead of being able to play the whole fucking game, it's just one of Mario Party's classic, pointless, 14-sided game mini-modes. Because Nintendo looked the Boris free play story and adventure modes already in the game and said, Not enough, we gotta add River Survival mode. It's necessary. I don't even own this game. There's plenty of other things how I could mention, like the game time estimate annoys me. But it's kind of just nitpicking at that point. As a side note, the trailer shows a mini game where you have to like put multiple switches together to make like a tank game stage, and I think it's the only game in the it's the only thing in the entire game that does anything like that. So why they bother showing the trailer makes no sense to me. Wow, we're only eight minutes in. I've already complained so much. Just think of how good the whole presentation will be. Okay, it's 45 minutes. Well, Nintendo is usually pretty good about being brief. I guess I'll get some mileage from this. Alright, let's see the next trailer. Oh shit, Fortnite. I can't wait to drop off the battle bus and meet some of you on the battlefield in Fortnite. Oh, guys, he's at the funny line! He's at the funny line! And then Reggie then talks about some uh, Indian games coming to the Switch, you know. Overcooked 2, Hollow Knight, and Killer Queen Black. Good games, but boy, it'd be a real shame if half these E3's announcements came. Half of this E3's announcements came from this little segment. After that, it says a real end games coming soon to Switch, and boy, wouldn't it be awful as this had as many or more games as there were announcements in this E3. Alright, so next game. Hmm, what will this be? I don't recognize this character. Wait. No, it's Smash Bros. Wait. Smash Bros? Like 15 minutes in. Now, you know what? Let's see where we're going. That was it. Yep. 
two-thirds of this 45 minutes conference is dedicated to Smash. Yeah, hey Nintendo, nice Smash trick. Did you have to show it off at E3? I feel like the main reason they did this is like, well, shit, we're not talking about Kirby's star allies again. It was like, ah, oh, we don't have any games. Uh, 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 Smash Brothers. <laughs> you know, let's get a shame they didn't talk about Kirby's star allies some more. Because I wanted to bitch about it. Yeah, if you could tell, not a big fan of this E3. I mean, I guess I could try. Oh shit, Mario? Wait, Kirby? Bowser? Sonic? Funny Ice Guys? We Fit Trainer? Pokemon Trainer? Sword Dude? Metal Gear? What is this, some kind of Smash Bros Ultimate? Yeah. We've streamlined the conditions for unlocking fighters. Oh yeah, this was so hard to unlock characters in Smash 4. Yeah, Sakurai then goes over some changes to older fighters and, okay, some new assist trophies, <laughs> okay, gameplay inkling, okay, stage info, okay, GameCube, okay, Big Dragon, okay. And I remember when people thought this game was going to be a port of Smash 4. People are stupid. Let's see, I would bitch and complain about Smash Bros. Ultimate for a little bit. You know what? I might. I wouldn't go off script. See, the main issue I was going to go on about is that the game has fuck all single player content, and it's not really a lot of incentive to replay it. Like, I mean, yeah, you got the world of light. Like, yeah, I understand. Really think about this game. It's essentially play Smash Battles or go to hell. There's no, like, you can't look at trophies. I mean, sure, you can look at the spirits. What the fuck are you going to tell you? There's no descriptions. You know, extras, chronicle, masterpieces, out the window with those. Stage builder, wasn't there till an update. You wanted events? Bye bye. <laughs> it's just Smash Battles. I mean, yeah, it's the core concept of the game. It's a fighting game. But other Smash Battles had distractions. You could play coin game, and brawl, trophy rush. I, I mean, they kept multi man smash. Thank God. <laughs> just like, I don't know. I just don't really feel the incentive to play it because I'm just fighting dudes. And the online is somehow like it's just a sphere of pure hate. I mean, it didn't even work on launch. Everything about the Smash Bros. online is awful. The connection's terrible. Other people are awful. The GSP system makes no sense. Just have ranks, Nintendo. I mean, there's already regular mode and elite smash. You already kind of had ranks. And then you just use random fucking points that don't mean anything. I beat this one random guy and suddenly I'm better than like 6,000 people. Huh? And why is it so low? Like, why is the, the GSP so low? on lower sections and then it'll get up to like 400,000 it'll jump up 25,000 people each time and it just keep getting up and it keep getting better more and more people shouldn't work the opposite you're beating lots of people early on and then the bl latter half of it like in least smash moves slowly who the fuck made this system it doesn't make any sense but yeah I mean they did patch in things so they could patch more stuff in, but they just don't. I mean, I can't, I can't understand now, but like before, they patched in Sage Builder, that's it. And no events, no spirit pinball mini game, no fucking descriptions, no chronicle mode. And none of this stuff's that hard to develop. Oh, I don't even think trophies are that hard to develop. I think it's kind of a cop out there. Excuse, I mean, they're already reused. Like in Smash Bros, they're reused trophy for ball, reused previous renders. I mean, cause like the descriptions aren't that hard. You at least have the descriptions of trophies, or not trophies, spirits. It's like you get fifty people. There's like a thousand spirits. If one dude could write like twenty-five descriptions per day. I don't know how the math I just set up works, but you, could, you know I calculate the math I did. This is going in the video. <laughs> me, me doing math. That's the power of being off script. See, there's like 
1,365. All addendumness and editing. Uh. So let's see. So 25, 50, 120. Oh, never mind. That cricket pretty much. Yeah, if my numbers were to believe, they could knock the the entirety of the experience in like a day and a half. I mean, my numbers were a little generous, but like still, it wouldn't take that long. I get it, like, it makes sense, like, most of these are super fucking obscure picks, most, like, there's probably, like, 20 plus spirits that never left Japan. There's probably hundreds of spirits for game series that aren't from Nintendo. Oh, you got an explanation for them? Oops, I don't really get it. So it's like, there's no boss rush mode. There's bosses in the game. All that master orders nonsense. Smash tour, smash run. Also, why does this game have like every Smash Bros game, every Smash stage except for like two? Like what the hell? Why would you get rid of Pokey Floats and Pack Maze? Why? What about Pokey Flute or Pack Maze? Was that hard to make? I don't get it. I guess Steve was cool. I haven't actually played with him. I kind of stopped caring about the game after the after the first Fighters Pass. It was crazy that that ended this year. All right. Well, let me cap off the. No. So that was E3 2018 and. Eh, not extremely interesting E3 to be honest. I most of the big players blew their loads for a while before this E3 Nintendo did in 2017. So when he did the year before that, this is kind of just the aftermath. I I would still say Microsoft won per se, as they had a lot of announcements and there were a decent amount of interesting ones. See, Nintendo second because as much as I can bitch and complain about everything they did that like entire year and I might the games themselves were actually pretty good the Volver is third as they you know they made some cool announcements had some funny jabs the gaming industry and started the neat little storyline for their shows Sony is fourth as they had very little mostly okay announcements but also a good percentage of games that were from previous E3s Ubisoft is fifth as most of their games are boring as sin that so there's not a lot that can be <clears throat> I'll restart that. Ubisoft is fifth, as most of their games were boring as sin, so there's not a lot they can do to make them interesting. Bethesda is sixth, because they kind of bungled all the potential they had, and the rest of it was eh, kind of bad. Or not interesting. It's like, wow guys, take a look at these mobile games. Last, and definitely least, is EA. I mean, like, like, I don't even think about what to say about this show. I mean, there's Command and Conquer Rivals. I don't even know if that came out. Uh, but remember, like, comment, and subscribe. You don't want to miss my once a month uploads. YouTube algorithm, not a fan of that. Uh, by the way, I will get to E3 2019 at some point. Not like right now, take a little bit of break from this. But not as long as it took for this video to come out. It's also probably going to be in one video. Because I've learned why most people don't do it the way I did. Although... Some fulfilling promises I've made in these E3 videos. I've got one more thing of unfinished business. A brawl is surely brutal.